Hello folks, it's Steve Cal 5 JUF. Hope everyone's having a good weekend so far. Today what I'm going to talk about is velocity factor. Velocity factor is something I've come across in many of my uh, coax uh, data sheets that I found and I was kind of curious what it is. So I watched a lot of videos and today I'm going to try to take a stab at explaining it uh, at least the way I understand it. So hopefully this will be some help. And maybe if other guys see this, you can help me with it. So what we're looking at is velocity factor. And essentially what this is, is this is a multiple that's mentioned in many of the data sheets. And this multiple can be anywhere from 0.66 to 0.87 are the typical ranges that I, will, that I have seen. So what happens is RF is alternating current and an antenna can only be resident at one frequency. When this happens, the antenna system consisting of the radio, coax, and antenna all at 50 ohms will deliver maximum power. And of course, in this configuration is often referred to as a balanced uh, feed line system, which means you'll typically have an SWR of 1.1 to 1. <clears throat> When you change frequency, this antenna is no longer resident and capacitance and inductance are introduced into the antenna feed line. This situation results in an SWR reading higher than 1.1 to 1. This is normal in ham and there are many tools, antenna tuners for example, that can adjust the mismatch to allow for an improved impedance signal back to the radio protecting the radio. This mismatch on the feed line is still there, however, the antenna tuner is allowing the radio to see an improved impedance matching and resulting in less heat. In RF, the term velocity factor is a factor that indicates how much the RF signal is slowed down along the coax media versus traveling in open space. The reason velocity factor is important is RF, there are an impedance transformation that occurs at half and quarter wave intervals. This is 100% dependent on the impedance introduced by your antenna and is frequency dependent. So essentially what we do is we'll take the speed of light, which is this lowercase c, and we'll multiply that by the velocity factor. And this will determine how much the RF at a given frequency is slowed down on the coax. And from this, we can establish the wavelength. From the wavelength, we can establish the distance for quarter and half, half wave intervals along the coax. And of course, at these distances, the voltage to the current ratio does some unique things that we'll hope to explain today. So in order to understand velocity factor, we must determine the wavelength of the frequency we are talking on. Then with the velocity factor, we can predict distances along the coax where the voltage and current ratio transformation occurs and what voltages and currents will be present. These are some of the things we'll go over here. I'll give you some examples here of uh, some various uh, antenna feed line impedances and what the voltage and current ratios are doing. There is a possibility of very high voltage and current combinations that can be encountered on the antenna system from a very high SWR reading such as 3.1 to 1 or 6.1 to 1. These high SWR readings can result in extreme swings of voltage current ratios at quarter and half wave intervals. So this is why we have to be careful. RF travels at the speed of light in open space. The wavelength is calculated based on the distance of 300 million meters, which is the lowercase c, divided by the frequency and the number of cycles. This will give us the distance of one wavelength or one cycle. So for example here, if I bring up the calculator, we can go ahead and calculate this wavelength real quick. And we're going to enter 3000000000, and we're going to divide it by 2840. Zero, zero, and then three more zeros. That's going to give us a wavelength of 10.56 meters. So that's how you do that. So this is important. This is basically what happens is there are 28,400,000 cycles that occur at a distance of 300 million meters, and all of this moves at the speed of light in one second. So that's kind of what all that's what's going on here. The below shows how RF in open space and the coax factor of 84 wavelength changes and is frequency dependent. So for example here, the wave number went from 10.56 to 8.87 meters. This is a 16% drop and in my example of my coax, my coax has a velocity factor of 0.84. So what this means is now what we're saying is originally we had 10.56 in open air 
radiating from the antenna. But when that same RF moves down the coax, it slows down. So instead of traveling 300 million meters per second, it now only travels 252 million meters per second. So that's what they talk about is the velocity factor. So essentially it's the same number of cycles, it's just it's moving slower along the feed line. All right. Now the below shows RF speed traveling, for example, on a 50 foot coax. Notice where the half and quarter wave points are along the coax. So what I'm trying to show here is, is essentially what you have is you have quarter wave multiples, which occur at odd multiples, and then you have half wave multiples, which occur at even. So what I'm talking about here is, this is odd, quarter wave, even, half wave, odd quarter wave, even half wave. So that's what we talk about here when you see these uh, multiples. And essentially, if you have a 50 foot section of coax at the frequency of 28,400, at every, at 7.2 feet, you'll have a quarter wave interval. 14.5 feet will be a quarter wave interval, 21.8 and 29.1. So I'm gonna show you what happens at these intervals. This is why it's important because depending on what your impedance is coming from the antenna and your coax, you can have some extreme uh, voltage swings here. So let's take a look at the first example. At half wave intervals, impedance introduced by the antenna will repeat along the feed line. So for example, what we have here is we have a 50 ohm antenna, 50 ohm coax, and a 50 ohm radio. In all the examples I'm going to give you, what we're going to change is we're going to be changing the antenna impedance. The coax impedance will stay the same and the radio impedance will stay the same. But what I want to show you is at half wave intervals, the impedance introduced at the base of the, of the antenna, that impedance is going to repeat at exactly one half wavelength. Now let's take a look at what happens at a quarter wavelength. At a quarter wavelength, something a little different happens. There's a formula that comes into play. So what happens here is this transformation that takes place inv involves this formula here. Now, in our example here, we have a 50 ohm feed line or antenna, and we have a 50 ohm coax. So essentially, this is what's happening here. Now, this is the formula that we would use to calculate this. But right now, we have 50 ohms here, and we also have it here. So essentially, what we have here is we have a balanced feed line. We've got a 50 ohm impedance across the antenna, the coax, and the radio. So let me show you what happens from a voltage standpoint. From a voltage standpoint, what happens now is we have some things going on. One of the things that you'll hear the term is voltage to current ratio. That is 100% that is dependent on what the impedance is doing along the feed line. So for example here, in this feed line here, when we're introducing 50 ohms, this is what's happening right here at a quarter wave interval. We have 77, 70.7 volts at 1.41 amps. And at a half wave interval, we have the same thing. So this is what they talk about when they say a balanced feed line. And I'll go ahead and do these formulas real quick here. What you'll do is you'll do second radical. And I'm going to enter 100 watts times 50 ohms. And that's going to give me 70.71 volts. And if I want to look at the current on the exact same feed line, we'll do the radical symbol again. And we'll do 100 watts divided by 50 ohms, whoops, that will give us 1.41 amps. So what happens here is, as long as you have, this is what I want to kind of make a point of, is if you have a balanced 50 ohm antenna, a 50 ohm coax, and a 50 ohm radio, this voltage to current ratio at each one of these intervals is going to be the same. And what they're saying here is essentially you have a balanced feed line. Your SWR on this feed line would be 1.1 to 1. You have 100% maximum 
RF transfer of energy from the radio to, through the coax to the antenna. Fully, fully resident here. Now let's take a look at what happens at a different scenario. Let's say, for example, if we introduce 75 ohms into our antenna system, for example, a dipole. So let's look at what we got going on on the feed line again. We got 75 ohms at the antenna. Now at half wave interval, it's going to repeat to 75 ohms. But let's take a look at what happens at a quarter wave interval. This incorporates our, for our formula again. We have to use this formula. So what we'll do now is with 75 ohms at the base of the antenna, at quarter wave intervals, this is going to be what our impedance is. And I'll do this formula here real quick for you. What we'll do now is we'll take 50 squared divided by 75. And that's going to give us an impedance of 333 ohms. So now what we're saying here is with an impedance of 75 ohms on the antenna, that 75 ohms repeats at half wave intervals. Now at quarter wave intervals, it does this transformation that I was talking about right here. So this is where the voltage to current ratio can change. Now let's take a look at what's happening with a 75 ohm antenna. Now we have some different numbers. At a quarter wave interval, remember now we have 33 ohms. At half wave intervals, we have 75 ohms. So let's take a look at that. If we do the math now, what will happen is we'll see that we have a different voltage to current ratio. One, one is at a quarter wave and the second one is at a half wave. So if we do this again, 100 times 33, that's going to give us 57 volts. Now if we want to see what the current is doing, we we'll also do the radical again, 100 divided by 33, that's going to give us our current. 1.741 amps. So you can see what's now happening is now we have a different different uh, relationship going on. Okay, the next, the last thing I want to show you is again looking at the voltage to current ratio along the feed line this way. This is the uh, impedance um, formula that you'll use. It looks just like the Ohm's law, except the only difference is resistance is replaced with impedance. So what happens here is we can take some examples. Here, if you see, as long as you have, again, we go back to the balanced 50 ohm feed line. And of course, at each one of these intervals, we're going to have 50 ohms all the way across and at the radio. So our voltage to current relationship is going to stay the same all the way across. You have 70 volts, 1.41 here, 70 volts, 1.41 here, all the way across. So now let's take a look at what happens at 75 ohms. Remember we talked about this transformation that takes place based on the impedance. Now if we're introducing 75 ohms now at the antenna, remember from the earlier slide, if we're introducing 75 ohms here, now we have a transformation. So at this point here, we have 86 volts at 1.15 amps. And then at this point here, we have 1.74 amps at 57 volts. So you see this, see how this repeats here again. This is at a half wave. This is at a quarter wave, half wave. And the last one I'll show you is 300 ohms. This one here is pretty drastic. If you see here at the antenna at 300 ohms, we have 173 volts at 0.5 amps. At a quarter wave interval, we have 28 volts at 3.5 amps. And of course, this repeats here. This repeats here again. So this is where you can have these extreme voltage to current uh, differences. So if you have a very high impedance at certain points of the line, you cut the coax or you touch it with your hand, you could get a pretty good shock. And the last thing I'll show you in summary is, most importantly is use high quality coax, connections are sealed, antenna is clear, no obstructions, and all connections are watertight. So anyway, I hope you enjoy the video. There'll be more to come. Thanks again for watching and uh, hope this helps. Thanks again.